You may have heard of something called the thermal protection system on the shuttle. You know all those black tiles along the bottom? You may also know that they help shield the craft from the 3,000 degree re-entry heat when it comes back into the Earth's atmosphere. But do you know what they're made of? Well, it's a pretty cool story. Johnny is over at the Thermal Protection System facility to see how the process works. Okay, so we're here at the Thermal Protection System facilities with Martin Wilson. How are you? I'm doing great. Good to see you. You too. Um, and this is where tiles begin life, right? This is uh, the part of the process where, where tiles begin. Uh, you know, this object right here is called a tile production unit. Okay. Uh, weighs about uh, three pounds. Yeah. It's very low density material, rigidized. Uh, fibrous ceramic, okay. capable of withstanding around about 23, 2400 degrees, uh, over 3000 for very short periods of time. Sure. And uh, we make these, uh, these uh, billets as we call them in here. Uh, we start off with uh, several different types of ceramic fiber that are all pre-kitted and pre-weighed. Yes. Uh, these materials are put into this blender that we have over here with about 25 gallons of water and various chemical additives, ammonium hydroxide, okay. uh, silicon carbide, other surfactants and what have you. Uh, we put them in this machine, and basically turn it on, and uh, it uh, blends the fiber for around about 12 minutes. Okay. And uh, after the blending process is done, we go ahead and we put it in this uh, casting tower over on the other side of the room. This uh, device here is uh, called a casting tower, and it's uh, really simply a hydraulic press. Uh, we have around about 25 gallons of the, uh, the prepared slurry, which is the chopped fiber, water, surfactant, and the other additives. Sure. And uh, we now go through the process of loading it into the, uh, into the press. And despite many years of high-tech methods of getting the slurry from the, the bucket to the tower, this, this is how we do it. It actually takes about 25 gallons of water to produce one block. And actually, for the for the CEV for the Orion, we're using this. That's that's actually what this is for, oh. uh, because these tiles are very light, right? Uh, extremely resistant to micrometeorites, and because of the trajectory of the new vehicle, it's going to see some pretty high temperatures, but for fairly short periods of time. And now they start this gradual dewatering process, which actually takes uh, takes a little while to do. At this stage of the process, uh, the, the billet's been pressed. The next step is to actually extrude the billet out of the tower. At that point, it'll be taken to the other end of the building, dried for uh, 16 hours at 250 degrees, and then ultimately fired in a, uh, in a kiln at 2,450 for several hours. And that uh, will give you the, the block that I showed you to start off with. So we are in a new section of the building. Um, why don't you tell us where we are and what do you do here? Well, this is the, uh, this is the machine shop. And this is where the, uh, the actual base tiles are machined out of the billets of material that we produce down at the other end of the building. There's several different ways we can do that. Uh, but primarily all of the tiles are machined using diamond coated tool steel cutters, okay. either on a manual machine, which is uh, called a tracer mill. The majority of the tiles we actually produce on these machines back here. This is a uh, five axis numerically controlled mill. Uh, they use these type of tools, these are diamond tool steel cutters. This machine is, uh, is highly automated. The program uh, originates back in the numerical design area. Okay. The, whole, the entire process takes about 20 minutes. Sure. In the beginning, we'll start off taking a series of rough cuts just to take the bulk of the material away. And then there's a series of uh, smaller and finer tools that will come in and start to take those surfaces away. So once they come out of the machine shop? Yes, the, the next uh, step of the process is to actually apply a series of ceramic coatings. The materials themselves, at, th at this point, do not have a lot of strength. So we put a coating on, it's either a black or a white coating, depending on the emittance properties required of the tile. And it's put on in several layers. We, we make the coatings in here. They're basically uh, very finely divided ceramic powders, either in alcohol or water, with various thickening agents and uh, uh, emittance and pigments. Um, they're all sprayed by hand. Um, the coating goes on in a, basically a three-step process. Uh, but again, it's, it's one of those processes that is a, a, a very exacting. A lot of weights and measures to make sure the coating is of the exact uh, correct thickness. This is the step that follows the, uh, the application of the coating okay. uh, that we just saw. The coating has been applied and uh, dried for several hours just at room temperature. Sure. Uh, but for the coating to um, 
consolidate or center. It has to be heated at uh, 2,200 degrees uh, for 90 minutes. Okay. Uh, that's what we do in these kilns. And we have a tile in here that's been undergoing that centering process. We can go ahead and take it out. Tiles at 2,200 degrees. And you'll be able to see how the black coating uh, starts to cool down very, very rapidly. Yeah. Now this is just raw, uncoated material. Sure. Look at them, they're glowing inside. But those you uh, you can actually go ahead and... Um, These you can pick, you pick up? Yeah. These? Yeah, you can just go ahead and grab them. Are you kidding me? Am I doing it right? Yep. Just pick them up by the I'm, corners. I'm so and... afraid to. What's that? <laughs> I'm afraid to. <laughs> as long as you just uh, handle them only with the lightest of pressure. With the lightest of pressure. You can go ahead and pick them up. This is so cool. <laughs> It's 2,000 degrees. Yep, it's 2,000 degrees. It's cooled off fairly quickly on the corners. Uh, you know, and that's the reason you're able to pick it up. It's still 2,200 degrees in the middle. You know, it will burn you if you're not too careful with it. Of course. Uh, but it is silica. It's very low density and uh, has a relatively low heat capacity, which is the only reason you're actually able to do that. <laughs> so tell me, how does the shuttle tile work? Well, in its simplest terms, a tile like this one here, it is really just a very, very lightweight, uh, but a super insulator. Okay. Uh, I mean, you can put heat to one side of it, and eventually the um, back side of the tile will get hot. But uh, for any type of re-entry vehicle, you know exactly what re-entry uh, consists of. So you, you know approximately what the heat loads are going to be, so then it's just a question of designing the tile to be of the correct thickness. And I can actually take this tile and uh, heat it up with a blowtorch, and you can see quite rapidly the surface will get up to about uh, a little over 2,000 degrees with just this propane torch. Okay. Uh, but the actual heat is, is, is soaking through the tile very, very slowly. Huh. I, you know, I could stand here for probably around about 20 minutes yes. uh, before the back of the tile becomes uncomfortably hot and I'd have to put it down. Really? It's, it's not um, hot now? On the other side? No, it's not hot at, at all. all. I've got my finger right on the back side of it and uh, I can't feel anything. <laughs> it's probably going to take about seven to seven or eight minutes before it starts to warm up. So yes, you can. Put your finger on the back of it. Yeah, yeah. It's just nothing. Nothing. And basically, that's how uh, how most of these ceramic uh, insulating strategies work. Right. Just very, very lightweight. Uh, they delay that heat pulse. Yes. And uh, you know, can be used for any re-entry vehicle, be it an Earth re-entry vehicle or a uh, one entering Mars or any other planet.